Hello, I'm, I'm Hilary, Associate Pastor of Oxford Bible Church. I wanted to ask you a question. Have you ever been bound with worry? Because worry causes you not to enjoy your life to its fullest. God has given us lots of blessings, but if we're bound with worry and care, then we cannot possibly enjoy it. You see, no matter where you are or what you're doing, that worry is constantly gnawing away at the inside of you. You may look at television to try and take your mind off of it, but as soon as that program that you're interested in stops, whoomp, there's the worry. You go to bed, you go to sleep, wow, in the middle of the night, it wakes you up. It drains you of your energy. It means that you don't function properly at work. It means that you sometimes really cannot think straight. This is not God's will for us. God wants us to be worry-free. He wants us to be carefree. He wants us to enjoy our lives. He wants us to enjoy all the blessings that he's provided for us through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I want to share with you the amazing provision that God has given to us um, to not be burdened with care and worry. Let's have a look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. The Bible tells us, casting all your care upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. Psalm 55, 22 tells us, cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never allow the righteous to be moved. Do you believe that God is, first of all, able, that God is willing to take care of you? I mean, every part of your life. I wanted us to read Psalm 121, verses 1 to 8. Excuse me, I need my specs on for this. And we're going to read from the New American Standard Bible version. If you like to follow along with me. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From whence shall come my help? My help. This is a, a proclamation. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Wow, God doesn't slumber or sleep. God is constantly taking care of you, looking out for you. God wants to take away from you all your burdens, all your worries, all your cares, all your anxieties. And he wants to, when you give those to him, you release him, you free him up to solve your problems and to change those difficult circumstances that you may find yourself in. And he wants to give you his peace. You know, worry starts with a thought. And as we think those thoughts, then it becomes anxiety. And then anxiety and becomes stress. And stress can manifest itself in our bodies as physical pain. I was talking to someone the other day who was a medical doctor, and he was saying that they had run tests and that stress causes very physical pain in a physical body. And in turn, if that's left to continue on, it then produces sickness in your body. It affects your immune system. Your immune system is not working at its fullest because of the stress in your body. God did not make our minds or our bodies to take the burden and the stress of the things that come upon our life. That's not meant to say that you say, oh, I don't have any troubles, I don't have any bills, I don't have this. No, it's taking your troubles to the Lord and giving them to him for him to solve. And when you hand them to him, then you can clearly hear from heaven anything that God requires you to do. Let's return to our text. It tells us to cast all our care upon him. Why? Because he cares for 
you. It says very clearly, for you. It's very personal. Um, you see, cast means to throw off, to throw aside, to throw away. But it's not like a gentle little lobbing it halfway across the room. Peter was a fisherman, and Peter knew what you had to do to throw your net out. And it means it's a very active word, it's a very strong word, and it takes a lot of effort. And so God tells us to throw our cares upon him. You see, when I was um, younger, my parents actually taught me to worry because I was terribly sort of dreamy. I was extremely dreamy. And I didn't sort of really worry about much because I was ever so dreamy. And they tried to help me, actually, to be a little bit more responsible in life. But the problem was they actually taught me to be worried. I remember saying to my father, oh, I'm not worried. And he said, you ought to. You ought to worry and you ought to be afraid. Unfortunately, it actually took root in me so that I became the best in the West actually at worrying. So um, I am sharing with you what the word of God has done for me. And I pray that it sets you free because worry doesn't produce anything good. In fact, it um, is detrimental to your health. It prevents you from hearing God clearly and it certainly doesn't solve the problems. And so I love the amplified version of this scripture. Casting the whole of your care, all of your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, on him. And Philippians chapter 4, verse, uh, verses 4, 6 to 7 you know, this is written by Paul. He was in prison. If ever anybody had a reason to be anxious, it was Paul. But listen to what he says to the saints, what he says to you and to me. This is written for us. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Verse 6, he tells you, be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't worry about a thing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And when you've done that, the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, it, it surpasses our, uh, our minds, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And Derek was pointing out to me the other day, um, we often miss with thanksgiving because what we're meant to do, we're meant to gather up our cares and our worries and we're meant to cast them upon the Lord. Then we're meant to thank him for taking care of the situation, thank him for solving the situation, thank, you for, thank God for giving you favor in the situation, thank God for giving you wisdom in this situation, thank God for showing you what you need to do and what you need to say. When you start thanking God, that means you have let go. That's the letting go and letting God. Um, you see, my grandpapa, he, he was a churchgoer and, and he did love the Lord, but he hadn't um, received teaching um, that we're able to have these days and he didn't know he shouldn't worry. You see, worry is actually a sin. It, the Bible clearly tells us that whatever is not of faith is sin. And when we're worrying, it means that our anxiety has triumphed over our faith. But when we refuse to worry and we choose to trust God, then our faith has triumphed over worry and over that situation. My grandpapa didn't know this. And life was changing around him dramatically and very fast. And actually, he died of worry. He worried himself to death at the age of 61 or 62. And Derek is teaching on longevity. Papa's life was never meant to finish at that age. He was meant to live to a full ripe old age and know his grandchildren. And we never did know him because he died um, be well before we were born. And so it's not God's will for any of us to go through life 
burdened down with worry and anxiety and care. And in my life, because I've been the best in the West at worrying, um, I've had to live my life according to 1 Peter 5, 7. I've had to make a cold, bloody decision not to worry. Do you know, it felt unnatural, hardly surprising, since I'd worried most of my life. So don't worry if it feels unnatural to you. It also felt irresponsible, but that had been fed into me by my family. They thought for my good, but I just felt very irresponsible. If you feel irresponsible, <laughs> don't be concerned about that either. And you see, I felt that if I was not continually concerned about this, and then when I became a Christian, if I wasn't constantly praying about this situation, then um, those, those difficulties would never be taken care of. Do you know, that couldn't be further from the truth. I have discovered in my Christian life that actually the worry kept me from looking to God and getting my answer. It was just blocking the way. It was blocking God from moving in my life. So I decided I had to make my mind up to stop worrying about these situations. Why? Why should I stop worrying? Because God cares for me and I, he will release his power when I stop worrying and I choose to trust him. 1 Peter 5, 7 from the 20th century New Testament translation tells us, you know, first of all, casting all your care upon him because he makes you his care. In other words, when you cast your cares upon him, he makes you his number one priority. He will be personally involved in this situation in which you find. God really cares. It's not like God, um, he has sent his son and, and Jesus has died on the cross and now everybody's gone off. No, 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 no. It couldn't be further from the truth. God is very intimately and personally involved in your life. He wants to solve this problem for you. You see... God is Jehovah Shammah, as we discovered when we were reading Psalm 23, the last time we were together. He is present in all places at all times. God is personally concerned about you. If you will come to him and give him your worries and your problems and your burdens, um, he will take care of them. But you see, God's never going to override your free will. God has given us free will. Do you know he will even allow us to go to hell if we choose to do so? But he will do everything to persuade us not to. And God is, as it were, beseeching you, please give me your worries, give me your burdens. I want to take them. I will solve this problem for you, but you must let go. Let go by praising me. Let go and let me take care of the situation. You see, God took the first step when Jesus died on the cross for us. So the second step is entirely up to you, up to me. As I said earlier, we need to gather up our cares and our worries and give them to God and let go with thanksgiving. You know, I find it very e I find it very helpful to write a letter to my heavenly father. Maybe you might think that's a bit girly, but it really helps me. I write, dear heavenly father, I love you and I trust you and your word tells me to cast my cares and my worries upon you. I now cast the care off and I list the cares and worries that I have. And I say, father, I thank you for taking care of these things and I determine by the help of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus to walk free of the care and the burden of these things, knowing that you are taking care of them. Then I fold it up and I post it. And I post it into my Bible. And I now say, that has gone to God. My Heavenly Father is now taking care of it. Maybe it would help you. I just want to read some other translations of 1 Peter 5, 7. His great interest is in you. You are his precious, 
come said, his precious charge. He is concerned for you. He cares for you affectionately and about you watchfully. As we read in Psalm 121, verse 3, he who keeps you will not slumber. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees ahead and has already made provision for this difficulty. It hasn't taken God by surprise. It may have taken you by surprise, takes me by surprise, but God is not taken by surprise. And the God who tells us to give us our cares, to trust him, he is Elohim, the covenant-keeping, miracle-working, all-powerful God. There is no one and nothing more powerful than Elohim, our God, our Heavenly Father, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing that exists is more powerful than him. And Elohim, Jehovah Jireh, he is the God who is taking care of you. 1 Peter 5 verse um, 6 says, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. How do we humble ourselves? It goes on to say in the next verse, verse 7, Casting all your care upon him. Now that word for care, the Greek, and forgive me if I don't pronounce it properly, merimna, which means, um, the first part of it means to divide, the second part means mind. That is a divided mind. This word carries within it um, distractions, anxieties, burdens, worry. So merimna means to be anxious beforehand about daily life. You know, there were days when I would, I would wake up and I'd say, oh Lord, I'm dreading today. I cannot face the day. I am so scared about all the things I have to do. Now, you would think I was actually having to face an army that was coming to kill me. No, no, no. It was just simple, everyday tasks that I had allowed to overload me. You see, such worry was totally unnecessary. It was very foolish of me because the Father's love provides our daily needs and our special needs. God knows what you need specially. There was one time when we were, um, we were going to go abroad and we knew that the country that we were going to did not like the gospel. And I really was very afraid. And I was so scared and I spent a night of, oh, <laughs> sleepless fear. And suddenly the Lord spoke to me and said to me, Hillary, if you knew how much I love you, you would never, ever be afraid again. And I say to you, if you knew how much God loves you, you would never be afraid again. And my prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that those dear ones within the sound of my voice, that you will reveal to them how much you love them and that the fear would just go away because they would know how much you love them and care for them. Verse 8 tells us, uh, be of sober spirit, be sober. You know, someone who is drunk, um, you know, they can't see clearly. I mean, they're tipsy and, and I mean, you know, they're, they're, uh, their, perception, their, their perception of distance is wrong for a start. They can't make good decisions when they're drunk. They can't even walk straight. And do you know that we can be drunk with worry and we can't see straight? We can't hear properly and we can't walk the path that God wants us to walk properly. I'd love to share an illustration with you. Um, Rick Renner, um, he started two churches in the, the former USSR. And can you imagine, I mean, he was under tremendous care. Uh, it's, and his youngest son said to him, um, Daddy, hasn't God proved himself faithful to you yet? And Rick said this sobered him up and he began to remember and rehearse all God's faithfulness to him and he came out of that slough of despondency. How does God care for us? I mean, God's already demonstrated it. Adam and Eve, and they blew it big time. God told them not to do something and they did it. They messed up. We do the same. God didn't destroy them. 
and God's not going to destroy us. God has provided forgiveness through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, God cared enough to send Jesus. It tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, perish but should have eternal life. God cared enough to send his Son. And it says, um, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As far as God's concerned, it's wiped clean. The slate is clean. God wants to help you. Whatever mess up you've made in your life, God wants to give you a fresh start. And God cared enough to send his Holy Spirit. Jesus foretells the coming of the Holy Spirit, the helper in the Gospel of John in chapters 14 to 16. Do read them. It's wonderful to see how the helper helps us. It tells us in Romans 8, 26, likewise the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. God knows we're weak. And as we pray, and we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit strengthens us and puts the wisdom of God in our spirit. You see, God has sent his Holy Spirit to help us, to come alongside us, to help us overcome all our tests and trials and tribulations. He's here to deliver us and to teach us through all these things. You know, we have the power of the Holy Spirit available to us every minute of every day for the rest of our lives. Do you believe that God cares for you? He sent his Holy Spirit to help you. And God cared enough about us to provide healing. 1 Peter 2.24 tells us, by whose stripes you were healed. God cares. He wants to heal your physical body. I do recommend that you get Derek's CDs, um, Foundations for Healing. That will increase your faith to receive your healing from the Lord. God cares enough to provide his sustaining power. He will sustain us in the midst of adverse circumstances. He didn't promise that life would be a bed of roses. But he is with us through that glen of gloom, through those difficult situations. And he's strengthening us. When we come out the other side, we will be able to help others as God has helped us. Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain you. You see, it implies that when we've cast our burden, then he is free to sustain you. It means that we have to give him our problems, then his sustaining power is released into our life. Um, this has really helped me. Pastor Kenneth Hagen um, said, often there is nothing we can do in the natural about a particular circumstance or situation, but God can. And all God asks us to do is to cast our cares on him. Imagine you have a very heavy load and someone comes along with a truck and says, look, put your load in my truck. Are you going to say, no, no, I prefer to carry this heavy load? That would be pride. No, you'd be so delighted and you throw your load into the truck. Now when the truck starts moving, do you dash after and say, excuse me, but can I have my load back? I'd rather like to carry it all the way home. No, we throw our load onto the truck. We need to let God carry it away. Um, we need to throw our burdens onto the Lord and not take them back. Let's determine this week that we will gather up our worries, write them down, but gather them up, humble ourselves before God, ask him for his help, and trust him to act in your behalf. He will if you will let him. And roll and let go. This is a wonderful picture of a camel with a very heavy load. And when it's time for the burden to come off him, he bends right low, he bends very, very low and tilts to one side and the burden rolls off. God wants us to humble ourselves before him, to refuse to entertain those worry thoughts and say, I am trusting God to work this out. This is true humility. 
I am trusting God to work this out for my good because he is the promise-keeping God. I just want to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for taking all our burdens and all our worries and working them out for our good according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.